It's time for the 300th episode of the Wrestling Perspective podcast. Got to get that right one day. Uh, Lars Fredrickson, Dennis Farrell here. At, when we do something big like the 300th, we do it big. We go out and get the biggest newsmakers we can find. Lars, this was your request. You made it happen, buddy. Well, you know, 300 is a big number, especially in, in the podcast world. And not only that, but talking about wrestling, I mean, that's an anomaly in itself, right? I mean, maybe in today's world, that's maybe it's maybe it's just passe. Maybe it's just whatever it is. But I'm stoked because we have what, in my opinion, the best tag team that's happening right now. It's FTR. You guys, welcome to the show. 300th episode. It's not two uh, dudes in their mom's basement. This is actually... You know, probably refreshing, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's our pleasure to be here for your 300th episode. Thank you. I'm yeah, actually awesome. in Lars's mom's basement, so. <laughs> Dax is in one of his basements right now. That's where his, his sharpshooter's bar is. Uh, and it, yeah. In my wife's basement. Uh, <laughs> yeah. His I basement used to have one too. Is, is, is the home gym. The wife's basement, he has like the corner, so he has his little sharpshooters there. Wow. Well, listen, let's jump right into it. We have a limited time with you. We want to squeeze you for all the information we can get. And I'm going to start off right now with the Owen Hart tournament qualifier. Holy shit. Uh, that's the best way to put it. When that news broke, uh, Lars texted me and said, how the fuck did we get FTR the day after this news broke? And I said, it's all you, Rockstar. So uh, <laughs> let me start out with saying this. When you go into it, and without giving too much away with the backstage stuff, you guys, friends forever, two Carolina boys make good. Do you, do you in first time wrestling each other that at least I know of, do you guys kind of going to call it in the ring? Or are you guys going to sit down and map it out? How, how do you guys go about doing something that's kind of momentous like this in your career? Um. So uh, for he and I, <clears throat> we only had one other quote unquote match against each other. And uh, that was the match that got us both hired with WWE. Um, they brought us in to have a tryout match or to, to, to do extra work. And they said, okay, you and you get in the ring and wrestle now. And uh, thankfully he and I both are from the Carolinas um, as we've said so many times before. And we've worked with Ricky Morton and we worked with Bobby Eaton and George South and, and, and Dennis Condry and, and all these guys from the, the Southern territory. And uh, if they ever saw you as a professional wrestler talking to your opponent or calling spots in the back, they would reprimand you and, and ridicule you. So thankfully he and I both grew up uh, calling our matches in the ring. And, and just because we didn't want to be ridiculed by our, our idols. Um, so we got in the ring together, never had we touched before. And uh, they said, it may go two minutes. It may go 20 minutes. We don't know. Uh, we got in the ring and Scott Armstrong was the referee. And he just said, they love it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, 15 minutes had gone by and they said, okay, they've seen enough. Just take it home. Uh, and so um, calling it in the ring is what we take pride in. Um, this last, the, the, the first half of this year so far, every single match you've seen, has been a, one of those matches where we've felt it in the ring. Um, you know, all the way back to Mox and Punk, to Ricky and Robert, uh, to, to the match. Ring and Darby. Yeah, all those matches, uh, every one of our opponents trusted us enough to call it in the ring. And uh, I think we did a hell of a job. Yeah, I'll just, I'm going to jump in here and I'll, I'll try to condense this as much as possible, possible but... Just to give you guys a little bit more backstory off of what he was saying. So we knew each other in the Carolinas, like, but we're, he's more from the coast. I'm more from the mountains. We're, for, we're about five hours apart. And Dax put himself through college. He worked two jobs. So he didn't take a bunch of bookings outside of like his, his capabilities. So like I was trying to get out there as much as possible. And I had gotten in pretty good with William Regal and he was helping me get some experience and get places and like get, get a foot in the door. Um, so the first time we did extra work together was when we first really like face to face, one-on-one -on -one talked. And I think it's apropos to talk about it now, but like really like the first thing, the bonding moment was, are you a Brett or a Sean guy? And I was like, Oh, of course, Brett. And I can just know 
no nothing against Sean. Like I know there's some history there, but whatever. Like great worker, fantastic worker. But I'm just I was, I've always been drawn to Brett, and it wasn't a personal. I I got to choose because I hate one. I just Brett was so good at what he does, and so that was a Monday. We that was at a at a Monday show, and then Tuesday we decided to meet and ride together. So we met that morning. We rode together. We talked about like if we get a chance to work together, with let's make sure we push that. And we went to the gym together. We worked out that morning. And like, it was just like, we were just best friends immediately. And like you said, we had the match and it just kept going and going and going. And it was just, I don't know. Like when we locked up and we just started working, like I've never felt anything just that easy. But from that point, moment forward, we, we just, I went to England and I went to Japan and I went to these other places with Regal's help to get some experience because I wanted to learn as many styles as possible. And Dax was, you know, that match got him his tryout, which got him signed. And that was, you know, he, he was there. And we would stay in touch saying, hey, when I get to NXT, I want to do this. We need to do this. Let's push this. And as soon as, sure enough, when it happened, we just, we started pushing it. We started trying to be like side by side, seen together all the time. Um, and then we just, we willed it into existence. And that's what happened. Um, and then, like he said, all the stuff we've been doing lately, has, it's been stuff that we decided we just wanted to have fun. Like we weren't going to stress ourselves out too much anymore because we were so anxious about stuff and trying to force things and like, like hitting our heads against the wall, trying to like break through. And it's like, wait, just stop, breathe, relax. Let's, let's just have fun. Whatever we get, let's just have fun with it. And I think it started for me after the injury. Like, and I, I won't touch on it too much, but I, I got had a conversation with Dave, Dax, whatever, where I told him I didn't think I wanted to keep going. Like, I was done. Um, sorry. <sighs> anyway, he talked me out of that. And I said, if we keep going, I just want to have fun, dude. I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to be, I don't want to be stressed. I want to love it. And we said, all right, let's do it. And from that moment forward, everything we did, we just wanted to have fun. And, like, it wanted to be what mattered to us, you know? And I think the fans got got on to that. And I think the fans got behind that. And they're just like, wow, these guys are really doing it. They're doing things that matter to them. And they're having fun. And they're, this is success to them. This, this, this is success to me. And I, I'm pretty sure it is to David as well. Like, so like, I think people got behind that. And they, they could sense it. And they got along for the ride. And that's, it's crazy. Sorry about all that. But there we go. No, I mean, obviously very emotional when you talk about that moment of your life and and I appreciate that because uh you know having that transparency transparency and honesty with us is is means a lot um and I will say that I'm very thankful that you did keep going because you're one hell of a talent and you know obviously so much so much more has happened for you since you've come back you know you guys you know had one hell of a week wrestling the Briscoes the Young Bucks you know you really kind of raised the bar you know, being, you know, almost now you kind of remind me of the, the typical Southern baby faces, you know what I mean? And that's where I kind of see it kind of going. But, you know, one of the things I was thinking about is like watching you guys and following you guys throughout your career. You started up north, you know, where, where, where you know, it tends to be maybe a little bit more stifled, the creativity. You, you, you kind of were talking about something that was that I want to hit on is about having fun, because that's kind of what, you know why I think the band that I've been in for 30 years has been successful because it's, you know, there's times to be serious and there's times to have fun, but lately it's been about having fun. Like, but it has to be a miserable business. Right. Like I'm, I'm 50 and my body hurts, but you know what? I'm just going to go have fun. Right. Cause that adrenaline, whatever, enough about me. My point is, is that like this creative freedom that you guys have now, you know what I mean? And a, where you're able to do things like this Owen Hart tournament, wrestle each other. You can, Dax, you can wrestle Punk. You know, you guys can go to the rest of the Briscoes over here. You can go wrestle the Young Bucks over here. I mean, this is, I mean, and then really hone in and be who you are. I mean, how important is this creative freedom for you guys? I mean, that's got to be something that you've got to be considering, you know, as far as what you're doing in the future. Yeah. Uh Absolutely. Uh, the creative freedom is, is awesome. But also, I think what's better than that is the opportunity to, to, that has given, that's been given to us for the creative freedom. Right. Um, because, you know, you know, transitioning to this, what you called Southern uh, Babyface Tag Team, um, we didn't have to change anything. You know what I mean? We didn't have to change one thing about it. 
It wasn't um, even th- it wasn't even something we con- like consciously decided. It just started happening, and we're okay. Like, wow. Yeah. Sorry. And and we we invited the fans in. We didn't we didn't push for anything, or, or we didn't uh, make them. You know, we didn't rah rah and make them cheer us. Uh, we just invited them in. And I think for so long they've respected us, and, and I say this humbly. For so long, they respected us and respected what we brought to the table, but also respected our love for wrestling um, and our passion for wrestling. They wanted to cheer us, and we finally invited them in and let them come in. Uh, and uh, I don't think we've, uh, you know, hopefully, I can hope I can speak for the fans, but we haven't let them down yet. I um, mean, we don't plan on letting them down. So the creative freedom is awesome. And, um, and, and being able to go out there and be professional wrestlers, that's all we've ever wanted to do. All of our life, we didn't, we didn't, we never wanted to be Hollywood stars. We never wanted to be these uh, mega uh, actors or, or anything like that. All we wanted to do was be professional wrestlers. And now we've been given the opportunity and uh, I'll be damned if we haven't been killing it the last four months. Yeah. Like we, our message has never changed. Like from, from the time we became a team till now, our message has always been, we want to raise tag team wrestling up to where it, it deserves to be. And we want to be the tag team on top of that because in our heart of hearts, and I'll say this until my heart stops beating, we are the greatest tag team on this planet and nobody can touch us. And so like, I want to, I want to be the best tag team in the best tag team division when it's at its absolute best all over the world. And so like to have the opportunities to go to Mexico and do something like it's totally different. Like it's like time traveling. It's, it, it's like going to 1980s Crockett, it really yeah. is because they, they just, they love it and they buy into it and they just, they want to cheer and boo like the good guys and the bad guys and it's it's just still real everywhere. And like, so we get to go do that and those shows are so much fun and it's like a challenge for us, which is when you're this old at this age, like I know it's not old, but like by wrestling standards, we're pretty old now and be able to challenge yourself still every time you go, you're going out there that's, that's hard to do because some people just fall into that rut of being content and not trying to learn or change. And we want to keep going. So like to have these options to go to Mexico, to go to Ring of Honor and have the Briscoes match, to have the Young Bucks match, to have the Rock and Roll match, to get to go to Boston and we tag up and we get to walk out with Bret Hart. Like these are all things that like just for us to check off our, our bucket list before we're done. We're like, we want to do these things. We need to do these things. And we can take him to Tony and we can say, Hey, what do you think? And he's like, let's fucking go. And we fucking go. You know, uh, creative freedom isn't given it's earned. And we all know about the frustrations you guys had up North. And if you believe the news is, you know, a couple of years ago or so, you guys had a little bit of frustration in AEW. What was the difference in handling the two different companies with your frustrations? Because it seemed like, as quick as the news hit, like, oh, FTR is frustrated at AEW, it like went away. You guys had smiles on your faces, and all of a sudden you're, you know, AAA champions, Ring of Honor champions, and having the best time of your life. Uh, honestly, man, I don't think there was, there was any difference in the frustration. Uh, you know, we were in, in WWE <clears throat> every night. Not one night did it ever cross our mind, oh, let's go ahead and let's just phone it in because they're not getting behind tag team wrestling. I, that's what kept our uh, our image and, and our reputation alive was that every single night, whether it was Raw, SmackDown, or a house show, we killed it. Every, whatever, every single second that was given to us, we would take it and we'd make the most of it. And we would do it with a smile on our face. Um, I don't think frustration varies you know, in, in wrestling or in life. I don't think it varies. Um, I think we get frustrated uh, because we love it so much. And it's so easy for wrestlers to say that nowadays, and they do. And they're oh, I love it. And I, you know, I would do anything for it, but I'll be damn, like, I've said it a million times. There's God, my wife and my daughter in professional wrestling. Well, my wife and daughter in, in cash and professional wrestling. And, and, and that's it. Um, and so it's easy. If I, you know, <laughs> I don't know if Dan will see it. Last night, I got frustrated. You're watching the TV show. I got frustrated because I felt like, uh, the announcement of Dax versus Cash should have been given a grand, a grander stage, um, but that's because I love it so much. Not because I had any ill feelings towards anybody. Same thing in WWE when they weren't giving tag teams any time or, or, or giving them, you know, proper 
um, lot, uh, spotlights for the matches, it, I was frustrated, but not at anybody in particular. I was frustrated because I wanted better and, and, and I just love it so much. So again, like I said, just to wrap it all up, the frustration doesn't vary. It's all the same across the board. And I'm going to be frustrated tomorrow, probably. You know, like, it, it's going to happen. You know, if you love it so much, it's going to happen. If you don't love it that much, you don't care that much, you'll sit back and just let things uh, come and go as they please. I'm not like that. I have to go out and get it. Yeah, and to tie that together with your last question, it's, the, it's also the creative freedom. So if we aren't doing something where we're like, okay, we, we're not going to be on AEW TV for a couple of weeks. Let's see if we can go to Mexico. Let's see if we can do Ring of Honor. Let's see if we can do a show with rock and roll. And we can have fun and we can, we can stay busy and we can do the things again that we want to check off for ourselves. And luckily, like fans are wanting to see this stuff too. So like being able to have a clear path to talk to somebody and voice that concern is a huge difference. Like, because, and again, it's not a knock on anybody, but the system over there is a lot more convoluted trying to get an answer from one person. You have to go here and here and here and here and here. It's just, okay, Tony, what do you think about this? Can we do this? Yeah, cool. Every, that's it. We're good. That's the solution. And it's, it's again, you're, if we're always going to be wanting to do something great. And that's anybody, if you ever see the best football players, the best basketball players, all the greatest ones are the ones that get pissed off the most often. You see like Tom Brady breaking his tablets, Aaron Rodgers throwing this. Like you see the guys that are great, always mad when they're not perfect. So we want to be doing more. So we're going to be frustrated, but here you get to voice that and you get to do something with it. Well, I, 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 I definitely appreciate that. But one thing that needs to be said since I'm an Oakland Raiders fan, a uh, fuck Tom Brady. But anyways, <laughs> um, he, even though he is a Bay Area guy. So I'll give him a little bit of that, but whatever. Um, anyways, so back to wrestling. Back to wrestling. Uh, um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about is like, you know, your style, these things that have kind of uh, uh, sort of developed over the years. I mean, obviously you take a lot from the rock and rolls and the Midnight Express and, and, and these guys, just as far as like maybe the persona or the presentation, let's just say. What do you guys, how, how do you, where do you draw inspiration to keep on uh, sort of uh, developing the characters uh, of who you are in the ring who you are as a team, because, you know, tag team wrestling can be very linear at times with character development, you know, because there's not a lot of places you can go. So what do you guys, I mean, that I know that's a, a very, you know, naive thing to say, but in my, watching wrestling over these years, it feels like tag teams can only get to a certain place. You know what I mean? As far as their, their persona. So where do you guys draw inspiration from? So I think the thing about us is that we, we've always been pretty much ourselves. And so we don't have, we just get to expound on that more and we get a chance to, you know, show different sides of that. But I think one of the reasons why things have worked out for us so well lately is because we've always just been real. Like we're two guys that we can, we can be passionate, either passionate, like in a good way, or we can be passionate and we're going to be assholes, but like we're honest about it. And we tell people what we want to do and we, you know, we don't take anything less than what we've set out for. And so I think, again, like now we just get to show different sides of our real selves. Like, and I still think there's so much more. Like, I feel like I can do so much more than I, I do when it comes to the talking side. And I, I, I look forward to getting chances to flush that out even more because that just is one more thing that we can work for. But I, I think that us being ourselves is why it's worked out for us. Yeah, and especially with the, you know, this, you know, the, the, the fans, you know, starting to take to us. Um, uh, again, the, it's, it's who you are and, and, and not trying to play a character or try to, to play wrestler or, um, you know, try to be someone you're not. Uh, I think they, they, they see that in us and I think they believe in us. And that's what it's all about. Um, is it like, like Cash said, being passionate uh, and, and, you know, displaying that passion. Uh, for us right now, our passion is being the best and winning. Uh, and I think the fans can, can uh, gravitate towards that because they want to do the same, whether it's at their job or in life with their family. They want to be the best. They want to be the best they possibly can. 
sometimes our passion comes out in a different way and you know they may not see eye to eye with us and that's when they decide to boo us but right now uh, they believe in us and it's very 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 hard again humbly speaking it's very very hard to make fans believe in something now and that's what we're here for is to bring out emotion and i think we do that with our matches because Physically, I can't, uh, and we don't like, not that we don't like, we don't wrestle this style. We work our matches and construct our matches around emotion. And, uh, and so we're thinking, okay, how are we going to make the fans, for, how are we going to make them mad right now? Okay, let's do this and this and this and make them mad. Now we want to make them kind of laugh at us a little bit so we can get embarrassed and frustrated. Okay, how can we do that? Whereas some other guys decide to work their matches around, okay, how can I get this move in? How can I get this move in? And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. That's just, <laughs> uh, but how we can match it. And I think fans are finally coming around to it. And they're saying, man, we've got some connection with these two five foot 10 Southern North Carolinians. Don't know what it is, but damn, we like it. And uh, that's pretty cool for us. Yeah, just real quick, I'm just going to say this. I think one big difference in our mindset when we go into, like, how we want a match to go is so many people come in with the, the, the mindset of, all right, I got – these are the moves that I do. How do we get there? Get there. I, we go in with the mindset of, okay, what do our opponents do and how can we work these into the match to make them make sense and we can get the best reactions for that. So instead of going in with how, what moves do we do and how do we hit them – we go on with what do our opponents do and how can we make them mean the most? So that's, I think, what makes us the most different is instead of what do we do, it's what can we do with that? Uh, I'll, I'll say this. I want to touch on the Owen Hart tournament one more time because I'm, I'm a geek for it. I love it. And I know how much nostalgia and legacy mean to you guys. When they Do they come to you guys and say, hey, in the first round or the qualifier – do you two want to fight each other or do you guys go to them and say, Hey, you know what would be fun in this tournament? That means a lot to us. We want to face off in the first round. The latter. Yeah, that was our idea. Totally. We had to, we had to fight for it, but that was completely our, our idea. Um, we've always wanted to have a match, but we didn't want to just have a match just to have a match. There had to be a reason. And uh, this is the perfect reason to do it. The Hart family means a lot to both of us personally and professionally. Um, and so being able to show respect to Owen Hart and his whole family, uh, what better way to do it than allowing the two biggest Hart family fans in the world, uh, compete. In yeah. The, uh, so long, there was no way for like Owen to be, you know, to get the, the tribute he deserved. And now we have a platform for that. And like that said, like we talked, touched on earlier, like we, we wrestled the one time and when we did, it, I've never felt like the electricity, like when we locked up and started working around how easy it was. And so like to be, we, we want to be the best. And that includes, like, I think Dax is the best wrestler in the world. And I said that like on Instagram or whatever, like I said, Wednesday, I wrestle the best in the world. And I think he is. And so for me to get better, I get, I want to wrestle him. Like I want to wrestle, like, I don't want to do a ton of single stuff, but I want to do something that matters to me. And this was one that we for years, we'd be like, how can we make it make sense? How can we have a single match against each other? Just a, a straight up back and forth wrestling match, like in our, in our vision. And there was no, no way to really make it make sense anytime before, because we don't ever want to tease a breakup, do a breakup. That's no interest in that. I'll retire before we ever even entertain that idea. Just I'll say that right here, right now, print it, tattoo it. I don't care. We're never going to do a breakup angle. So we want Thank God. To Yes. Yeah. Brandon, so when, when we heard about the old one, we were like, we got to go to Tony with the, the idea of the singles match. And like, he did like it, but he was like, okay, I got to see, see if I can make it make sense. And we just stayed on him about it. Hey, can we, can we, can we? <laughs> and finally, like he was like, all right, I, I got a way where we can make it all work. Yes, we can do it. I'll, we'll announce it in Philly. You'll do it in Philly. It's going down. So yeah, it was like he was he liked the idea, but we had to make sure it's just please let us, please let us. This means a lot to us. And he finally like gave us the nod and here we are. Yeah, I think with that match, uh, you know, I know him and he knows me probably, you know, better than almost anybody in the world. Uh, and I know he's got a short temper, and God knows he knows I have a short temper as well. 
Uh, so I would expect on Wednesday uh, for there to be some great wrestling, but I would also expect there not to be a shortage of physicality and some uh, live rounds being thrown too. Yeah, the harder somebody hits me usually, the more I respect them, and I already have all the respect in the world for him. So hit it, hit me. Let's go. Yeah. Like, it's only going to make me respect him even more. I guess oh. that's – this is the kind of thing we look for. I just so I guess say, I get, go ahead. I just want to say I respect Lars, but don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to – you know, I'm, I'm going to do a little potato pool, see who throws the first potato <laughs> on this one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, you should Any, do it. Anytime you see anything, just tally it up. Yeah. Count on them all. <laughs> Start with the lockup and go from there. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, been thinking about the schedule because since post the pandemic, I mean, uh, some people say we're still whatever. Who cares? Who cares? But basically, the whole business shuts down. AEW still runs, you know, uh, in Florida. The schedule's a lot different. You know, obviously we were talking to guys back during the height of the pandemic. And, you know, they were saying it's like, sometimes these bumps are now, now because you're not taking, taking them five days a week. Now they're hurting more. Now with this schedule, that's kind of lax where you're not working five days a week for just one company. What are you, do you enjoy doing what you're doing now by going out, reaching out and getting into other promotions, doing other things, other angles, whatever it may be with other, you know, companies, or would you rather be like in a place, one place working five days a week, here's your plane ticket, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, honestly, you know, we haven't taken uh, very many independent bookings. Uh, we've worked with the Rock and Roll Express because we wanted to give them the last great match. And I'm very proud Fact, but I think we did. I would agree with that too. Um, that's the only independent uh, match we've taken. Now we do have one with Bret Hart as the manager. Of course, we're going to well, take what, that. Well, what I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dax. What I mean is, like, you know, you going down to Mexico, you hold their 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 tag titles, you hold the ROH tag titles. Yes, Tony Khan now owns the company. What I'm saying is, is you you're maneuvering in and out of different companies, is what I meant. Yeah, well, I like that because we get to we get to work with different array of talent, you know, uh, different times. Uh, but what I like even more is the reduced schedule because for so long, I missed so much with my daughter. I mean, her birthday was just two days ago and I oh, got to go home. Birthday. Thank you. I got to stay home. Tony allowed me to stay home with her for eighth birthday. Uh, and for six years, I missed every birthday. I missed every soccer game and basketball game. Uh, and now I'm allowed to stay home with my wife and daughter. And that means more to me than anything. Uh, but to get off of that, because I'll talk about the family for all, all, all podcasts, um, I enjoy being able to go in and out uh, because, again, we get to work with different area talents and show um, our, our, our range as far as, you know, uh, our, our skill level goes. Yeah, for me, I love getting to do what we're doing right now. Honestly, like to have the freedom to kind of carry pick thing, like projects we want to do outside, like – we got to say, hey, can we do, go to AAA? That's something we'd want to do. We want to check that off because that means something to us. Ring of Honor meant something to us. Rock, rock and Roll meant something to us. Like this Brett one, like I said, they all mean something to us. So like having that ability to kind of cherry pick things that we want to do instead of just being told you're doing this here, 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 be there, be there, here's your schedule. Like now like we can just look at offers or we can somebody will come to us and say, here's Here's what we're thinking. What do you what do you guys want to do? And we're like, okay, yeah, we'll do that one. And like, we're gonna have the uh, the wolves coming up, and that was one where we're like, yeah, let's do that one. Like, there's these are all ones that I, I call it our hit list because you know, wink to the hitman. But like, these are things that we get we have the freedom to do now, and that's like you said, the schedule for us so long was no choice and it's constant and like when you're in it it's fun it's a blast but you, you miss a lot yeah. and now like we get to pick and choose for the most part what we miss and what we don't and that's beautiful yeah the the past 300 episodes i've been lucky enough to do this podcast with pd williams lars frederickson jason kindle Darren mccarty uh a ton of other guys if i forgot their names eli dimitri Drake, young dimitri young and I feel like I'm like the pod, podcast version of you guys where you've been touched by, you know, Dusty Rhodes, Tully, now Bret Hart. You have all these legends that are kind of endorsing you guys. 
and this might be like the fanboy question, but like behind closed doors, you guys just go, holy fuck, these guys want us to succeed. I mean, it, it seems like our like our Sims world, like we just created this ourselves, like in our dream, but it's, yeah, like sometimes it's, you got to pinch yourself to believe it's real. Like he'll, he'll show me a text and I'm like, how, how is that really happening? And like, I'll show him one and we'll just see something that's just like, never like in my wildest dreams honestly to the extent that it is just because like i never could have imagined guys like sting would still be around and active like the way he is right now or that totally would come back into the business so the amount of things that like didn't seem possible even when i was starting out that now like are real life and they're happening and it's stuff that we you know we have people that we've looked up to and idolized that come to us and tell us that we're, we're their favorites and it's just i'll never get used to that ever and never yeah we have a million texts between the two of us that just says can you and it, yeah it is crazy because, but it's because guys like edge and randy orton and you know obviously brett hart and arn anderson and, and you know the list goes on and on of all these guys that just text us and say man i watched your match and that was the best match i've seen that wrestler have or man, that match was the best tag team match I've ever seen in my entire life. Like hearing those things from the guys that we idolized and uh, grew up loving, man, it never gets old. Just pros, pros. Like they're they're the most respected of like all the peers and like of their time. Everybody that was <clears throat> rated highly for so long, like the guys that are still around, like they're all these people that are they're held high regard. So to be in a held high regard, be, to be held in high regard by them blows my mind. I'll say this real quick, Lars. It's not a question, but uh, it happens between Lars and I too. When uh, after an interview or something, one of the talents will either text him or myself or send us an email. And they're like, this was the most, you know, my favorite podcast to do. Thank you guys so much. And, you know, Lars will send me a screenshot going, holy cow, can you believe yeah. that this guy loves doing our podcast? So I think Lars and I know exactly what you guys mean when you, when you say that stuff. Because even where we are, Top Guy Podcast, we still do the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's just how can it how can that be something that really happened? Is because you see it from a certain view for so long that it's just like the outside looking in. To be on the inside with that is just it's it's never like going to be something that I'll get used to. It's human emotion, man, and uh, yeah. they're stronger than human emotion. Well, you know, one of the things that happens that you know when you when you do start to get more successful. You know, and I think we, you know, from my experience, and I can only come from my experience, but, you know, a lot of eyes will come on you and you'll achieve, you know, you'll get all the accolades and all of the, and then the criticism starts to happen, right? So, and I think we've all been at the butt end of that in some way, shape, or form. Um, right now, all eyes are on you guys, and there's always an ebb and flow to all of this. So, you know, what is it in your mindset that's just like, you know, keeping you sort of uh, in humility during this time? Um, man, uh, like you said, the criticism, you know, we hear it all the time or we did hear it all the time. And um, I, I think for so long, the fans watched our matches and we were a, uh, we were a heel, a heel's heel. And we wanted to make our baby faces look so good. And so the, I don't think the fans consciously knew, oh, man, these, these are the guys that are creating the, the, the excitement. These are the guys that are, are, are bumping around for the face face and making them look good. And now uh, it's flipped a little bit, and they've and we've you know, invited them in, and now they're part of the ride. They're, they're along the FTR ride, and they, they see it now. And, they, and, and um, man, it's just the, it's the coolest thing to, to be able to uh, know that for – 35 years I grew up being a huge professional wrestling fan and then so long I admired and looked up and still do to Bret Hart and that now there are fans uh, that come to our meet and greets or tag us online or whatever and they and they they do they break down and cry and say man you guys helped me through this or you guys uh saved me from this um and that never uh that that never you know that never the, the, the satisfaction I get from that never goes away, man. especially after that Renee Young podcast. Uh, 
hearing all the people that that said thank you for speaking up uh, because of the struggles I had with anxiety and how it affected my life. Um, hearing people say uh, you allowed me to to understand that I wasn't alone. Oof, that just meant the world to me. So so being humble is very easy because uh, man, the fans are fucking incredible, dude. Yeah, I, I think after a certain point, you, you have to try to learn to filter out as much of the criticism as possible. Like constructive criticism, I'm all for, but at some point people just want to criticize just to tear you down. And I've, I've, always, I've always been a little bit more uh, antisocial. Like I, I, I can hang out and I can be like, you know, outgoing, but like I, when my social fuse is done, like I, I withdraw and I need to go like decompress and recharge. And so like that, that it, it goes with social media also. Like I'll, I can't read all the stuff on there. I can't acknowledge everything on there. I have to like bring myself away from it and not let it be something that dictates my life or my mood. So like for me, I'd made like a, a choice to try to avoid negativity. Like it just is negative for being the sake of tearing someone down. And so like, again, that, I think that was something and Dax and I had to talk about it again, like around the same time as the injury where we, we said we, we let's change mentalities. Let's stop like getting frustrated if things aren't going the way we think they should be going, the way we envision them. And let's just start having fun with what we have and make it like control what we can. And once we started having fun and like go in that direction, everything just kind of changed and everything just started kind of clicking. And I think regardless, like, like you said, it's ebb and flow, but no matter like, if people start criticizing us again, that's fine. Like I'm going to still have fun. And I think for the most part, like as long as I'm still having fun and still like not letting it affect me and bring me down and affect my work, then the fans are going to enjoy that too. So maybe like they'll still enjoy us for a little bit longer and they'll still ride that wave with us. Well, that's one of the reasons why I asked that question is because of that interview, Dax. Because, I mean, you know, all of us are human beings after all. We might be performers, you know, but we also have feelings and families and things like that. And there is a real life. You know, I, I want to piggyback on, on this question, Dennis, if you don't mind, because what we've been talking about a lot is the ability that you guys have to go from asshole heel to Southern style baby face. And for you guys, obviously, this happened so naturally. And some companies would stop that right in the middle or try to push down your throat who they want to be the baby face, who they want to be the heel. Right. So when you, when you start to feel this and see this, you know what I mean? And you guys, you know, obviously are in the business and have a sense for it. I mean, you guys are, are probably some of the best crowd readers in the world, in my opinion. Where does the conversation start? Is it like something you guys are both noticing at the same time, or is it just like a starts with a feeling or a look or a reaction? What is it? Yeah, slowly it started. Um, it, honestly, for me, it started, I started noticing it on the, the, the darks and the elevations. Uh, the fans just, when we would, when our music would hit that brand new music that they all fell in love with, uh, when our music would hit, they were excited to see us and we'd get like a, yeah, I don't want to say we'd get a pop because that makes me sound like, you know, this egotistical bastard, but uh, we would get a reaction. But then they were like, oh, wait a second, we're supposed to boo them. And, and we started noticing that. And so he and I started talking for a few months. We're like, hey, man, maybe, you know, maybe we should try this whole baby face thing out. Because here's the thing is, as, as heels or bad guys, um, the only thing that, that is different about us is raw our emotion from our real life frustrations you know so me um if i'm at starbucks and there's someone in front of me and i haven't had coffee yet and they know what starbucks has and they are saying i get i don't know do i want to in my mind i'm like hurry up you know what fucking coffee they have <sighs> uh and so i draw from that and, and and that's the emotion that i draw uh but in real life like with my wife and my daughter um, I love life. I, I, I love life and I love being with them. Um, and so like, I can, I can pull from that and say, okay, this is the emotion that I want to invoke uh, from the fans. And I want them to see like, Hey man, he's, he's, he's just like us, you know, an everyday hardworking uh, average American uh, and um, pulling that emotion from a good place in my life instead of pulling an emotion from, from a not so good place 
He's the only difference between what we do as a baby face and as a heel. Um, and with Dan, I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant, but with, with Dan, you know, with Cash, it started with his injury. And at the same time is when my anxiety started. And our change in mentality completely helped both of us, but really saved me. Like having my wife help me through that and, and going to therapy and, and getting on medication like Zoloft and, and Klonopin and, and things that I would now advocate for. At one time I wouldn't, but like getting all those things and, and figuring out, hey man, life is really cool. Just take a step back and breathe and not and, and try to not focus on the bad part of life. Going from that, uh, and, and when we changed our mentality, I think that's when the fans, and I think Cash may have hit on this earlier, but that, that's when the fans started accepting us and wanting us because they saw, okay, these guys are busting their ass and they're having fun. Um, all because of that change in mentality. And it just so happened that both of those, um, my anxiety and his injury, both happened almost simultaneous, simultaneously. Um, that anxiety scared the shit out of me and I want to help as many people as I can uh, to, to ever get over that. So long story short, I think, uh, I think the, uh, the change of mentality is what made the people want to gravitate towards us. Yeah, it's like the, the scope of what Dax went through, like anxiety wise, like when he finally opened up about that, I think that endeared him to a lot of people because that's not something that like a guy that calls himself grumpy uncle Dax talks about you know like he's he's the the, the surly asshole that knocks somebody out and wants to fight all the time but, so like to see him vulnerable like people appreciate being real again like, and it wasn't something like it wasn't like this thought out like hey do this it was just Renee gave him the the platform and he like the she's just so easy to talk to and like by the time you know like you're just you're you want to get that story out there and you want to help somebody and like I said we know we started noticing it a little bit I'm um, it was like a respect reaction like they, they would cheer and then they would boo or like sometimes they would just like uh we did a, a dark match in Orlando against Toa and I can't remember the other guy's name right now so I feel bad but like it was Orlando, so I don't know. Sorry about the plane flying overhead. Uh, probably still at the airport. Um, but they cheered us the whole time. They treated us like baby faces, and it's like it's weird. Like, but it, it kind of kept happening to, to lesser extents here and there. But when we finally like, hey, let's just let's not try to fight it. We won't we won't change anything. We just won't fight it either. It just it, it caught fire, and it's it from. And I, I've talked about this to him with him a few times. I'm sorry, I'm going on again. But like from Columbia to Dallas to Boston to New Orleans, like those four shows in like a two week span to see like how the crowd like just went from we're heels one week, we're bad guys one week to just all of a sudden like the crowd's chanting FTR at the top of their lungs. I'm, yeah. I never, never could have imagined that. But I think it's just because we didn't try to force that. Yeah. I know we got time for like one more question a piece. You have a hard out here. So I just, AEW, AEW's uh, PR group have been amazing to us in this podcast. And this was a hard question to kind of formulate without feeling like I'm stepping on anybody's toes here. But earlier this week, there was that report that came out about how the up north company is interested in you guys. And I guess I'm going to detect this question from a different angle is how much damage control do you guys have to do when some kind of report like that comes out? Um, I, I, I you know, <laughs> we didn't do any damage control. Um, you know, I think that both companies are in the business of, uh, getting talent and getting talented talent, um, not just any talent. And I think they've seen the waves we've made, uh, especially in the last eight months, eight, to 10 months, um, more so the last four months, 2022 has been awesome for us. Um, so yeah, why wouldn't they? put feelers out. Uh, why wouldn't they, you know, ask about us? Uh, you know, I, uh, and here's the thing is we respect Tony so much. Um, we would never in a million years while we're in contract with Tony, would we ever go behind his back and talk contract status with anybody else? Um, 
no other company. We would never, we would never do that to him because we have too much respect for what he's given us and allowed us to do. Um, now, on the flip side of that, you know, we're going to go where professional wrestling takes us and um, wherever the best opportunity is for us um, and wherever we can, again, build upon our legacy. Um, and that's the most important thing. Obviously, money is really, really cool. Um, I'm allowed to take care of my wife and daughter. Um, but whenever uh, I initially, we initially got the, the contract offer from WWE, I called my grandmother and I told her how much it was. And I told her, I think I'm going to turn it down. And her exact words were, David, how much money do you need? And I was like, oh, my God, she's right. Like my dad and my mom busted their ass to take care of me. And if they can do it. I can do the same thing and I don't have to be, you know, I don't, I don't have to do this. I do it because I love it. And uh, so we're going to go wherever the love and uh, the love of wrestling takes us. Yeah. Again, like neither one of us come from money. Neither one of us need a lot of money. So I can do what, I, as long as I do what I love. And I, like, again, when I, when I had doubts about wanting to keep going, it's because I didn't know if I was still having fun and when I made that conscious decision to just have the most fun I could with everything, I think that was a big turning point. Um, so I don't, I can't see myself changing anything right now. This is my, the closest vision I have to pro wrestling, like the territory days, we're doing it. Like, I feel like we kind of work territories right now. Yeah. AEW is where we're, it's our home, but we get a chance to go to Mexico. We get a chance to go to Ring of Honor and we get a chance hopefully to, go to Japan, all these other places, like, that's cool as hell to me. And that's the, that's like my dream of wrestling. That's what I see. And that's what I have fun doing. And if I'm not having fun, like, I don't care how much money I'm making. Like it's, I, I, I won't do it. So as long as I'm having fun, that's what matters to me. So I can't see anything changing right now. Well, you know, I mean, from my last, I, there's so many questions I want to ask and I know you guys got to go. I will hope, hope that you would, both be willing to come back on. I, 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 I really see you guys as, you know, I mean, and what you were just talking about as far as the, uh, the, the territories. I mean, as a fan and, and a fan since I was 10 years old, watching you guys, the nods that you're making to the past, what you're doing in the future, this, uh, it's almost as this tag team is perfectly made for what is happening in this golden age of wrestling that we're in right now. And uh, I feel like you guys, you know, it's like, do you want to be Led Zeppelin or do you want to be Motorhead? Well, Motorhead's always going to be way fucking cooler. You know what I mean? <laughs> so straight up. But I guess for my last question, um, you know, the singles match, and I want to kind of end it off on that, you know, talking a little bit about that, and maybe go home with that. You know, I, Dax, we've seen you wrestle CM Punk. You had an amazing, and I mean, when we talked after the match, he was so stoked because you guys put on a wrestling performance. You know what I mean? And, you know, you two are going to lock up here for the first time, you know, in the Owen Hart tournament here coming up. Now, just curiosity, did you guys ever think about maybe, is Bret Hart going to be there? Would you ever think about maybe, having them walk you both down? Are you guys going to come in separately? Like, that's kind of what I want to know. Uh, man. Uh, so I think about Bret Hart walking me down the aisle every day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think about, I, wish, I wish he walked my wife down the aisle for our wedding. <laughs> uh, but, uh, man, you, just, do, just having the match uh, out of respect for Owen, I think is enough for me. Um, of course, we would love to have Brett there, but, you know, that's, that's not our call. Um, but again, just having the match and, and, and only doing this match, only having this match with my best friend, my tag team partner, the guy I'm never going to leave his side. The only reason we're having this match is for Owen Hart. That's it. Um, okay. So I think if, you know, if, if Brett was there, it might take away a little bit because he's such a big star and he's such a beloved uh a professional, you know, the, the fans, I've said it on a few interviews before, there have been guys who are, who have been and are more over than Brett, but there aren't guys, there's no other professional wrestler that was over like Brett. The fans just have a love for him. Um, so if he was there, I think that the focus may be turned to him instead of to the match with Owen. Um, if it's up to me, you're going to hear the FTR music twice. 
um, just because the music's so badass. Um, but three times at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but this may go down as possibly the most important match in my career. Uh, I get to wrestle the man I've traveled this world with for 10 years. Uh, I get to wrestle the, who I consider as well, I've told him this a million times, the best wrestler in the world. Um, and we get to do it for Owen Hart on national television. Um, it's going to be, uh, if it's up to us, it's going to be the greatest match of all time. It's going to be physical. Um, and we're just proud to be able to, to have this match for him. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to put a damper on anything. But for me, like, I don't know. Brett deserves to just be happy doing whatever he does. So, like, if it only ends up being one night in Boston where he walks us out to the ring, I think that might even hold a more, like, special place in my heart just because I can save it, like, this one night and I can have that memory locked in there forever and nothing has to change because right now I'm having a lot of fun just wrestling with my best friend, like, without any, like, anybody else there. Like, it's just he and I right now. And it hasn't been that way for a while. I know if it's totally, but, like, it, it feels good to just be – Dax and Cash right now. So if it's just one night with like Brett coming out in Boston, I think that would be like a cherry on top for me. And this right here, like the Owen wrestling him again, like I said, I said it started this. He's the best wrestler in the world and he's my best friend. And it's something like I haven't had a singles match in AEW. I haven't had a singles match in probably three years. Yeah. And I never really have a lot of desire to, but this is something that like I have a desire to do. Like, I want to wrestle my best friend. I, I that means something to me, and it's not like uh, I got to prove myself for this or that. Like, I just want this for myself. Like, I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody other than this match is going to be something that I really wanted to do and that I love, and that's cool. So, for me, it's just about going out there, paying respect to Owen, paying respect to my best friend, and just doing what I love and getting to have a blast doing it because this is going to be something that, and that was another thing, not enough to keep going on, but like, I really wanted my first singles match to be with Dave in AEW. And like, that was another reason why when it lined up where we could have my first singles match be against him in the Owen, I was like, please, please make that happen. So for me, it's just about honoring Owen, wrestling my best friend for the one night and whatever happens, happens after that. If I win, I don't, I don't expect him to be upset. And I know if he wins, I'm going to hug him just as much as I would, no matter what afterwards. Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood. I know you got to go FTR, triple a tag team champions, ring of honor, tag team champions. Thank you so much for hanging out with us here on the wrestling perspective. No problem. Um, I, 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 I,